Hello and welcome to the Join Dota League Season 4 here on Hefla TV 1. I'm Grandin Sphi and I'm going to be joined um, throughout this series by more Rage Please. This is going to be a best of two series between Root Gaming and Union Gaming. I think both of them are more or less running with their lineups, even though some of the names have changed. I believe Jessed is side roll and um, as for Root Gaming, Ink Dota, I think he's actually officially added to their stand-in. And these players on their team, even though they have stand-in tags, have been playing with them throughout the Join Dota League. Hey, yes, I am excited to see the Peruvian squad yeah, union gaming. They've only go. played two games thus far. They fell to the Brazilian squad, Pain Gaming to likes of 4DR, King RD, and Baga. So they didn't have the best showing there, but Root, not the best showing either throughout the tournament. They're 2-10 and ten thus far, but let's hop Radiant's right into dead. their draft. Yeah, we're going to see Root Gaming snag up the Razor and Rubik as their first two picks, and Union Gaming uh, will get the Brewmaster at their disposal. Yeah, very strong first picks from both sides. Union even going to pick up the Skyrath. Kind of a pick deny, uh, obviously for reasons with the Ancient Seal. Skyrath does counter up the Brewmaster, and he's a very good zoning support. Offers quite a bit of utility with all three of his abilities. Interesting ban here from Union Gaming. They're going to take out the Meepo, so they're going to deny that up from Ink Dota, who's obviously a very capable Meepo player. A little bit of a respect ban in that sense void and tide taken out from root gaming so a lot of team fight with the dp tide and the void is going to be eliminated in these first couple band phases yeah i am kind of sad that we see the meepo band out but i can definitely understand it brewmaster and scarath mage not particularly good at dealing with meepo unless you can isolate a single one away from the other one scarath mage has a pretty difficult time bursting down the meepo with mystic flare especially and Brewmaster, although he can throw a couple of them up in the air and boulder toss one of them up, uh, generally Meepo is able to overcome that. Drunken Haze is probably Brewmaster's biggest tool against Meepo. Um, but outside of that, it is just kind of a respect ban. Centaur banned out by Root Gaming. The large initiating offlaners are fairly slim um, inside the pool as of now. Uh, Root Gaming have taken pretty much all of the top tier ones out, except for the Batrider, which is still there. Yeah, definitely. And perhaps that indicates they're looking for maybe a solo safe laner and don't want a difficult matchup up against one of those really strong off laners like the Centaur, like the Void, like the Tide. So interesting from them. We'll see what direction they take it in. And if I'm not mistaken, the Primal Split actually, the um, the units from the Primal Split actually can get bound by the Earthbind from Meepo. So another way to counter it up for obvious reasons. Skyrath, very low base armor, so Meepo can chunk him down with relative ease so despite it being a respect ban also does put a fork into their lineup for union gaming so wise ban from them yeah still either team has a lot of different directions that they could take this in the next stage we're going to see that doom banned out from union gaming securing their brewmaster uh, just making it a lot easier for him to get off his split they're already dealing um up against one uh instant disable in the rubik's telekinesis and getting a doom to follow that up could be um really nice for root gaming and just shutting down that brewmaster ulti if you can't get it off he's a pretty useless hero yeah, it's very situational hero. This Doom was a lot more popular in the last one. I haven't seen it too much in the JDL, but very good against the Brewmaster and probably another reason why they picked up this guy. Slark is going to be the ban here from Root Gaming, so very elusive um, and very effective core in the mid game where Brewmaster is strongest. So definitely would synergize in that sense in terms of a timing window with Union Gaming's lineup. Definitely. For Root, this is kind of the pick that's going to flavor the rest of their draft. They have some decent push and team fight uh, pick up potential and what have seconds. you, but really they haven't shown their cards as of yet. This pick might be the one to do so, or they could just go um, for a really standard Reserve support time. picks. Earthshaker and Skyrath Mage, or excuse me, Earthshaker and Sand King are both there, as is the Ogre if they just want another stunning support. Um, mm -hmm. Or Root Gaming could have something else in mind. Yeah, Ogre definitely been uh, very popular as of late. The Bloodless Moosty does synergize pretty well with the Unstable Current and the Static Link, so it helps Razor to be sort of a race car, often building into that phase of drums. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see that picked up, but they actually go with the LC, so interesting pickup from Root. What lane do you think they'll take this to thus far? I think it's going to be an offlane, or um, mid, rather, Legion Commander. Offlane is an option. Um, mm -hmm. for Root, but I think that that's just the strongest way to lead it. Up against the Brewmaster, the commander should have a decent time. Yeah, definitely. Over overwhelming odds. Very strong in that mid lane, and of course, for obvious reasons, LC does very well up against melee heroes, so Brew will still find his farm, but I think Damn the priority so more for go. Root is for LC to get up that early blink, and as you mentioned, quickest way to do so is to take up that solo mid roll. Fair enough. 
Union Gaming do have the Skyrath Mage, and Reserve although he synergizes well with the Leech Commander, is also pretty good against it. Dropping a Mystic Flare mm -hmm. can force Leech Commander to lose some duels, unless the Skyrath is the one to get tagged by that spell. In which case, a very low HP and armor hero, Leech Commander can usually yeah. chunk through him by himself. Yep, Union gonna eat into their reserve time. Very telling pick should be very indicative of their draft here, unless, as you mentioned before, they choose to go from for a support. But either way, should be a pretty strong roaming duo with the open up of the Skyrath here. Ogre still in the pool for them. Earthshaker, Sand King, all there. As you mentioned, they all do pretty darn well with that Ancient Seal amplification of the magic damage. So see what Union look to pick up here. Probably have Sidoral's hero here or Jessaid. Uh, as he's changed his name recently, apparently. And I guess Nightmare is a replacement. I haven't seen him play with UG yet, so he is under the tag, so it must be a new addition to the team. The rest of the, the uh, players I do recognize, they're going to pick up the Venge here, so definitely a strong roaming combo. Not the best zoning support, but they already have Skywrath to do that. And the swap can be used both defensively and offensively to keep the Brewmaster at least alive, sustain him until he gets that split off. Or to deny Root Gaming wins inside the duel swap, even mm -hmm. if it's not going to like outright save that hero, it can delay it long enough uh, to where the extra damage isn't won by the Leech Commander. It's a nice pick, even though we glanced over it earlier on. Ten seconds mm -hmm. to go. Yeah, for now, Root Gaming, they're lacking one of their supports. I expect that to be um, their next pick. Um, I'm not exactly sure they want to fill that last core just yet, unless they have something right. specific in mind. Yeah, doing it before the last two bands really does shrink the pool down for their last hero, and I don't think that they want to give away too much about their draft at this point, so I think it would be reasonable, as you mentioned, for them to go for a support hero here. Not sure what they could couple with this Rubik. Rubik kind of a jack-of-all-trades in terms of a support. He has decent roam, decent ability to farm, decent nuke with the Fade Bolt. And of course, he does offer that Null Field, which often goes overlooked, but isn't really skilled until later in the game. So we'll see what they couple with him. Hopefully, uh, it is something that allows them to go a little bit more aggressive, but they're going to have their work cut out for them up against this Skyrath Vengeful Duel. And so I doubt they'll be going aggressive. But they do pick up the Ogre here, so... Yeah, even if they don't go for an aggressive trial to start things off, they'll probably just secure some lane farm for whoever's uh, farming in the safe lane. Right now, it looks like that's the Razor, and then you could probably leave him solo versus uh, whatever offlaner Union Gaming decide to pick, and then Rubik and Ogre uh, can look to roam. I quite like the Ogre pick here. It's just going to offer them a lot of Disable, and Leech Commander and Razor are cores that do uh, very well benefit from that Bloodlust. Phantom Assassin, the choice for Union Gaming is currently pretty hard for root gaming to deal with unless they get a lucky multicast mm -hmm. they do have a little bit of a nuke damage with the wolverine laws the fade bolt Damn and of course the ogre's to toolkit so that's not bad for the phantom but as you said she should have more or less free reign unless she is initiated on with the dual plasma field going to do quite a bit of work against her but i don't mind the pick at all and they do have the space creators in the first three picks to allow this pa to get some farm up so don't mind the pick for ben has from union gaming he should do pretty well the uh, eye of the storm is physical damage as well so the pa should be pretty sustainable up against this lineup for root 10 seconds to go yeah and it is a pretty nice hero to have on your side, especially when you have things to buff up the damage, like the Ventual Spirit aura, as well as that Minus Armor coming out from the Wave of Terror. It's a decent core coming out from Union Gaming, and I don't think Root really have enough picks to really punish this Phantom Assassin. Yeah, certainly so. It could be also be somewhat of a pick deny uh, if they put the LC in the offlane, as you mentioned as a possibility for root gaming the bloodlust does work really well into the late game with that pa so we're gonna see a magnus ban here coming out from root gaming not sure if sidoral plays that all too often in the mid lane but nonetheless very good hero for their team they would have to relegate the brewmaster to the off lane so i'm not a huge fan of that magnus ban but rp always a devastating ability in its own right yeah, I think they'd probably throw the Magnus to the offlane if they did pick it up, but either way, it would have been a lot of initiating power and, most importantly, probably the Empower for Fendip Assassin. It's just so scary to go up against. Mm -hmm. Viper ban from Union Gaming, so interesting ban from them, and perhaps we'll see a core Viper warlock ban. come out here for Root Gaming, so very interesting stuff. 
Uh, they will probably have to put the LC in the offlane unless they consider an Ogre Magi offlane at this point with the LC in the mid and the Warlock in support. But Rubik Warlock, not the strongest support duo. So I think I expect a core Warlock here. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the mid Warlock. Um, maybe they decide to go aggressive with the Razor, but I think this is just going to be a straight-up offlane Legion Commander. Mm -hmm. Up against the Scarf Mage, Ventral Spirit, Phantom Assassin, she's not going to have a great time. Um, but as long as you get a couple of levels, it doesn't matter as much. Legion can always go back into the jungle to get up some farm and levels. Certainly so. Elder Titan going to round out the lineup for Union Gaming here. So I think their lanes are pretty much set in stone at the defensive try. Centered around the Phantom Assassin with the ET in the offlane. And the Brew in the mid. Very strong hero is the ET with some levels, um, of course. Doesn't need items as much as your general hero does. Can pretty much go for anything from the Yules to the Pipe to the Mech for the team. So I do like this pick to round out the lineup. The Stomp would be nice to counter up that duel before the LC gets a BKB. So what are your thoughts on the last pick for Union Gaming? I quite like it. Synergizes really well with um, Union Gaming supports on top of it. The physical and mm -hmm. magical uh, damage amplification on top of Natural Order is going to be very impressive. Scarath Mage and Phantom Assassin are going to be dishing. And I think it's a good pick, although the laning stage can get sketchy for offlane Elder Titans. That said, we'll get into this game and we'll have to see how it works out. For either yeah, side, Union Gaming is going to be playing on the radiant side of the map with Angel. Heading up that Elder Titan towards the offlane. Mid lane looks like we're going to have Jess Edder's sidewall playing on the Phantom Assassin. Safe lane tri lane. But yeah, it's going to be farming on the Brewmaster. Ventral Spirit by Zender and Skyrath Mage by Nightmare. Yep, and on the side of the Dire Root Gaming, going to have the big bad bird running towards the offlane on that Legion Commander, Joik. Picking up the Ogre Magi. I'm gonna look like an offlane dual lane at this point. Chicken MC in the mid on the Warlock. We got Ink on the one position, Razor. And your boy JC, the captain of Root, picking up that five position Rubik. Yeah. I quite like this decision from Root to go for dual lanes. If they expect the Elder Titan in the offlane, honestly, you don't need much more than the Razor to zone him out. In fact, the Rubik could probably leave him solo down and bottom. Big Bad Bird taking quite a lot of frass from the combination of Zender as well as Benya's um, just running him down, going to force him to eat through some of his consumables. But yeah, this bottom dual lane is going to work out a lot better um, than just having the Ogre Magi roam up towards top and try to zone out the um, Elder Titan. I think it's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Big Bad Bird going to rotate back to the fountain actually and heal up as he does have quite a, quite a bit of time before the spawn. One thing for Zinderals, he used up that magic missile, doesn't have any clarities on him, so he's only really going to have one for the next little bit in lane unless he picks up a regen here and it is a double damage. Yeah, a solid rune to secure for his team, and more importantly, they'll get the D ward immediately as the Ogre Magi walks into the Rose Pit and you kind of don't do that unless you're placing this ward. Mm -hmm. So good game sense there from Union to take away some of that information for this dual offlane. Definitely, and that's really important. The other word for the Dire side, I'm not sure if it's been placed just yet, or at least I can't spot it out anywhere. And Ogre, it looks like he's just going to leave the Leech Commander high and dry down towards the bottom lane, or potentially look to make something happen on this PA. PA currently is going to be harassed a little bit by the Warlock, and Warlock should have a decent time in this lane, but mm -hmm. straight up shut down the PA without rotations. Definitely not. Yeah. Up top, Razor should be having the time of his life, but for now, Angel does have quite a bit of damage with that Astral Spirit and is able to get a couple of CS and should be able to get his experience. Right now, Union Gaming are looking really good in the laning phase just from the get go. Yeah, I really like the Boots first build on the Elder Titan. He should be just fine. I don't think the duration of a Telekinesis will be enough for the Razor to steal enough damage to kill him off. Uh, the bottom lane, Big Bad Bird and Joik positioned pretty aggressively looking to soak up some XP from this kill. And they may pay for it. Ignite goes out onto Nightmare Concussive Shot though. Gonna dissuade them from continuing to aggress upon him and uh, they won't find much with this engagement. Ben has looking to wrap with a clap here but nice pathing by Big Bad Bird and he'll dodge that up. However, Joik is in Zinderal's face and he could get caught out here. Brewmaster's still in lane though and he's pretty tanky this early on. Getting body blocked up by Zinderal. So the concussive shot comes out nice and late. Arcane Bolt, this should be your first blood. And it's gonna go the way of Nightmare on the Skyrath. That will afford him an early set of boots if he chooses to go that route. Yeah, he is completely tapped to have mana after that kill, but definitely worth it for Union Gaming. Finding quite a big advantage in this bottom lane. Even just forcing Leech Commander to go back at the early start is worth the mana they've already spent, and Brewmaster is having a pretty free time, and we'll be able to get up his bottle, or, um, excuse me, Blink Dagger very quickly. 
Yep, he is topping that CS chart. Followed closely by Sidoral or just said in the mid. So doing well up against this Warlock. Taking a bit of harass, but she's got more than enough regen to sustain herself in this lane already with a PMS up. Yeah, loaded out with that to start out. Uh, sent out the Tangos as well. And I expect the next item for just uh, to be just the bottle to spam out those daggers and maintain this farm. For now, mid lane is more or less a wash. But if you look at the off lane, Angel, he's getting a lot more than I thought he would out of this off lane. Currently 7 CS, just being able to spam out that Astral Spirit and put a lot of damage back into Ink. Yeah, and he does already have 600 gold, so he's not too far off that soul ring if he cho chooses to go that route. And it doesn't look like he's been aggressed upon too much, so I wouldn't mind the soul ring at all. Yeah, for sure. It looks like Elder Titan's going to have a better time than, honestly, he should, especially on the Radiant side of the map. Um, mm -hmm. Or not even especially on the Radiant side of the map, just as a solo offlaner without any help. Um, yeah, Uni Gaming, it seems that they're either breaking even or winning all three of these Bottom lanes. lane. Oh. Gonna be aggressed on here, Big Bad Bird. He's gonna get concussed up. He, he took a clap to the face as well. Is now out of mana, but Presti Attack is gonna heal him up enough so that they can't continue. Nightmare also, as you mentioned, pretty low on mana. Gonna see Joik rotate back down to the bottom lane. He's still only level one on this Ogre Magi, so no stun yet available from him. And the Soul Ring is now purchased up by Angel. Yeah, I think what Root need to do pretty soon is get that level 2 on the Orgrimmon Giant and start looking for kills or rotations with the Rubik to try to, I don't know, remedy this early game, put some pressure mm -hmm. onto the enemy side, especially this Phantom Assassin in mid. Yeah, certainly finding a little too much up against the Warlock, and there should be word going into the mid game, maxing out that dagger already. It does have the bottle in tow, and is going to pick up this 4-minute rune here. Actually, Angel going to go to secure it, and should be, we'll give it to the PA at this point. But Angel, as you mentioned, having a great time, already level 4. Yeah, and he's going to get the um, levels up into his spirit very quickly, and subsequently into the um, aura. Elder Titan, his weakest point in the game is that laning phase, and mm -hmm. if this is any indication of how it's going to transition, Angel is going to be having a pretty good time this game. Ben has not going to opt for the complete bottle rush at this point as he puts a clap into the face of the LC. He just purchased up his treads, so four minutes in, farming very well, dominating the CS for it at 25 and 11, six above the safe lane razor for Root. Yeah. Leech Commander, as far as heroes are concerned, doesn't need items as much as the next hero. Getting that blink dagger, however, is pretty crucial for Root, and that's not going to be there for quite some time. Angel going to back off the aggression top lane with a stomp into both JC and Ink as he stole 70 damage from that level 2 static link, but the sleep is enough for him to back off there and he'll be just fine to spam out this Ancestral Spirit and keep finding CS. Yeah, right now we're or playing this incredibly passively, but we are Not going lame. to see some aggression bottom. They find Big Bad Bird after a clap and a magic missile, and that's all that they really needed to do. Ogre wasn't anywhere close, couldn't offer a stun. Yeah, and the fact that they're able to do this without the presence of Nightmare is ever so scary for Root Gaming. Already 2-zip is the score, five and a half minutes in the game. Meanwhile, the PA being aggressed on in the mid, Upheaval is going to be cast on him. He's pretty slow. This is going to linger for just a moment, but will be able to back off and bottle up. Actually going to put a Spectral Dagger into the Warlock. Arcane Bolt to follow, couple right clicks and the Magic Missile, and they're going to find the return kill onto Chicken MC. So nice turnaround TP rotations uh, from the Skywrath Mage, as well as the walk-in from that Vengeful Spirit there. 3 oh, six minutes in, early game looking really good for Union. Yeah, you can't really ask for much more, and all three of these lanes are looking to be dominated by Union Gaming. Just said, now level 6 has the chance for some lucky crits, and that could set up for kills. Union Gaming are getting pretty much everything they could want. Benyaz isn't forced into getting a bottle. Stop up top. That's on the ink, but not under your boy JC, and lucky enough for the Rubik, incredibly low. And the Warlock was taken down again by the tandem of the Vengeful Spirit, Skyrath, and the PA. Easy kill, Spectral Dagger into the Magic Missile once again. And this is really, it's going to be, uh, it doesn't bode well, I should say, for the mid game for Root. When you pick up a core Warlock, you, you want him to find farm and you want it to find, er, him, find it early and get up that Chaotic Offering. Yeah, Warlock is literally one experience away from having its level 6 available. Elder Titan, in the meantime, does die up top. But even like one death on Angel I think is acceptable as long as he's getting good experience. The offlane for Root isn't having similar success at all. Leech Commander is now farming up jungle and she's doing so pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. But the Big Bad Bird isn't going to have an immediate impact. Um, there's not a clear place to gank for this LC. 
Yeah, and it's tough to set up the duo. They really only have the Telekinese and the Fire Blast to do so. So if they put all their eggs into one basket, it's going to leave the rest of Union Gaming's lineup to have free reign over the team fights and uh, disrupt the flow of things. So it's going to be tough without a blink for Big Bad Bird to have any effect uh, with that level 6. Yeah, Chica MC, it's a crit on the Stifling Dagger coming out from <clears throat> Jessed, and this Phantom Assassin is just farming away. Razor's doing decently up top, but Razor, as far as heroes are concerned, doesn't have like that immediate item, like a Blink Dagger, to really <clears throat> turn on the aggression or get kills. Yeah, there's certainly no queue for a Razor. There's a lot of flexibility in the early build for him, and you would probably, at this point in the game, want your free farming Brewmaster over the free farming Razor. 48 CS already on Ben has, and... Uh, he is not far off the blink as we see Big Bad Bird dying to a neutral. I think that was intentional. He buys the complete yeah, power treads before he does so. And yeah, so that's an efficient use of his time. The enemy team doesn't get anything for it. And although it might look peculiar, I think that's worthwhile. Inside the river, we might see a scuffle looking for this rune. Not going to happen. Lose rune secured by the warlock. Now jumped upon. Chicken MC is going to be crit by Jessed. He needs a little bit more backup. Maybe another stifling dagger is going to do it. He's going to drop the chaotic offering onto Jessed, but not doing enough damage. Now lifted up by the Rubik, going to pull him back in. The Chicken MC, Jessed's damage isn't there, and he is healing up throughout the entirety of this. The warlock. Warlock Golem is doing a decent amount, but not enough. Does get one blur miss. Now Jessed, going to book it, does have the bottle to heal up, and nothing's going to happen. Benefiting Somebody's Union cooking. Gaming, and now, in the meantime, Razor up towards top, dies to the Skyrath Mage and Elder Titan. Yeah, and they stave off the aggression mid and get a very high priority kill on the Razor. Nice little uh, bit of RNG with that level 1 blur to keep Jessed alive. He could have had a little more with that Stifling Dagger. It may have killed off the Warlock if he got the crit there, but regardless, across the map, very good trade for Union Gaming. They're also pressuring the Tier 1 in the safe lane. Yeah, Warlock, especially as a mid-hero, is very tied down uh, to that ultimate cooldown, and with a tower going down in favor of Benyaz, getting that last hit, he's going to have his Blink Dagger up. It looks like Union Gaming have all of the tools that they need for this point in the game. Up towards top, Nightmare is going to be lifted up, and the, with the Link going on from Ink, that's a killing spree going the way of the Razor, so a little bit of something for Root to pick up. Yeah, nice little pick off for them there. Good bounty worth of gold. 780 experience, 587 going the way of that triple hero tandem. But in the bot lane, Blink Forward, Clap, and the Magic Missile onto Big Bad Bird. He needs one Drunken Brawler crit, but he's actually going to get lifted by the rotating in Rubik. And that'll deter any more aggression from Ben Has and Zero's very close to killing off that LC once again. Already with an 0 and 2 start is the Big Bad Bird. Yeah. Brewmaster wanted to hold on to his split. I can respect that, but if he did um, use the split, I think that's pretty much a guaranteed kill, which mm -hmm. might have been worth it at the end of the day. Yes, yeah, certainly it hasn't been mid. used, but mid lane, uh, jump in and the concussive shot, ancient seal, one arcane bolt, even going to commit the mystic flare as there were TP rotations in, so efficient use of that by Nightmare, although not entirely necessary, was good to back off, but a re-engage from Jessaid here, he's going to blink in after the stifling dagger, not going to have quite enough to finish off the big bad bird, he'll just press the attack, and heal up as Jessed f finds an invisibility rune in the top. I don't think that's going to immediately set something up, but definitely something for Root to consider if they do decide to gank this PA, which honestly is really darn hard, even with one point up in the blur. The blink strike to evade um, some aggression and can always look for turnarounds if there's crits involved. Concussive shot, stifling dagger, slow into Big Bad Bird. Jessed is going to show some caution as he doesn't want to dive that tier 1 tower. Nightmare stunned up, will take quite a bit of damage, but out of mana it doesn't really matter. Razor up towards top, split upon after the stomp, and Ink Dota is going to fall. A very nice kill once again, and the one hero that was continuing to free farm in the early game was a constant for Root, has now fallen twice in the last couple minutes as your boy JC going to be brought down to the shockwave almost from the creep, but Angel does find the kill there, so another couple of pickoffs going the way of Union in the top lane. Yeah, it's just looking so good for them, Root. They need to start finding or finding the farm on a big bad bird to get that yeah, blink dagger, but now, oh, with this dagger and the crit, not even necessary from Jessed. He'll be able to not only kill uh, the Legion Commander, but steal a couple of his creeps as well. Yep, gonna farm up the stack uncontested, and as you mentioned, that invisibility rune having an immediate impact on the game, rotating through the jungle, finding a solo pick, knowing that the Razor and the Rubik were down from dying top lane. Yeah, and Phantom Assassin looks like it's going to be a Battle Fury build for Jessed. It does have the broadsword in the inventory. 
Yeah, and definitely one that is warranted with uh, the kind of lead that Union does have at this point. Going to accelerate her farm be, uh, and allow her to snowball even further ahead. This Legion Commander has only 500 gold this po at this point. This could be a 20-plus minute blink dagger, and that's really going to hamper any initiation potential for Root Gaming throughout the mid-game. Dive up top on Ink Dota. They're going to be able to bring him down in a heartbeat. Blink Clap as well as the Blink Strike from Jesse is going to mean that Racer is going to fall. And right now Union Gaming just have so much of an advantage. Every single one of their heroes is finding something. And even the Skyrath Mage, he has two Null Talismans and honestly that's about all you need. Yep, yeah, you look at the metrics, 7,500 gold, or net worth, I should say, and experience lead thus far for Union Gaming, so steady incline for them. Concussive shot stolen mid lane by your boy JC, probably not the skill he exactly wanted. Ancient Seal, a little more useful at this point in the game, especially versus the Brewmaster. This next Warlock Ultimate from Chicken MC needs to be huge, to be honest. Like, Root Gaming need to find something with this cooldown, or else the Warlock is pretty much a dead pick, and for now, Chicken MC has not had an impact in the game at all. 0 3 and 0. He's farmed a little bit, but honestly, just hasn't been able to find a foothold. Really interesting pickup. Not sure that if this is actually going to hold true, but two Blades of Alacrity just purchased that. They go in mid lane. Van House is going to be dropped the Chaotic Offering on. He's going to be dueled up. He's completely isolated, but the Mystic Flare and the jump in onto Big Bad Bird. They're going to give Van House some free damage. He's going to split after that. Boulder Toss into Chicken MC. They're going to chase down this Warlock with a few right clicks. Not willing to commit the PA yet, who is pretty low. May blink up from the low ground. Cyclone up on the Ogre Magi. Stifling Dagger comes out. One more right click. The Immolation actually just saved. Going to come in kill secured a few more right clicks though ignite gonna go out onto jesse he'll pick down so gets a little greedy there probably could have let ben hats finish off that kill and does uh trade over his life for that one either way good trade in the mid lane for union gaming they bring down two for one yeah and that extra damage on the brewmaster we talked about it a little bit inside the drop that scarath mage up against the duel it's so risky to go for it whenever the scarath mage is close and ben Yaz is one of the worst heroes to uh, give it to on the side of Union Gaming. Fan of Assassin, definitely the worst. Um, but even the Brewmaster, those guaranteed crits are going to start to sting, even with just plus 10 damage. Yeah, definitely. And later in the game, often transitioning to that Vlad's AC build. There are a lot of these Brewmasters in the recent meta, so can hit quite hard. What I was going to mention is Zinderals on the Vengeful Spirit has picked up two Blades of Alacrity. So perhaps we will see a Diffusal Blade come out here to counter up those chaotic offering demons and that's going to be absolutely devastating as you said yeah. a lot of the aggression for root is centered around that chaotic offering and you saw them initiate with it mid there so if they're able to drop those with a couple purges that's pretty much a huge portion of the team fight for root eliminated yeah and this vengeful spirit's getting more farm than the warlock himself and is going <laughs> to have that diffusal probably 16 minutes mm -hmm. maybe has enough to buy up the robe and all she needs is the uh, recipe completed yeah, which is not too expensive in its own. So any other item progression? Looks like Angel is well on his way to a Yule Scepter. Needs the Void Stone as well as the recipe. So still about 1,200 gold needed for him. But either way, things going very well for Union in terms of item progression. Yeah. Right now, Root, they need to start looking for pickoffs. And to get that, I think they need the Blink Dagger on the Leech Commander, which is still... Seemingly forever away for this mm -hmm. LC. Like she has 600 gold saved up, and her stacks have been invaded. She doesn't have those available anymore, and there's just not a clean place in the map for Root to fight. Based on their lineup, they can't really take it comfortably late either, unless Razor gets absolutely fat. And he's died just one too many times. Two, three, and zero on Ink Dota. Even though he got good farm in the laning stage, he has Treads Cloak and Aquila, very lackluster farm. Yes, yeah, certainly, and uh, I think the next step perhaps for Union Gaming to is establish a little bit more of an aggressive semblance of map control here. They have quite a bit of warding, but it's all on their half of the map. I feel if they're able to get something down in the jungle, as you said, they can continue to pick off this Legion commander, and that will pretty much spell doom for Root's lineup. Yeah, and I'd love to see that. Their supports, when you're ahead, are just so scary. Scarth Mage Venge, but it's a <laughs> lot of damage, and... Can look for those pickoffs and probably Mid -lane. just them two. Oh, we're gonna see the jump. Brewmaster split coming out. He's gonna. <clears throat> Actually, that's from the Rubik focusing into the Brewmaster himself. There is a stifling dagger flying through. Does crit onto the Warlock. He's gonna be able to get the link up onto Ben. He has no ultimate for 30 seconds. Didn't have the mana, even if he wanted to pop that. Plasma Field fights through. Everybody's surviving for now. Your boy JC back into Rubik form. And the end, it favors Union Gaming, even with a split on their side. Can cast a shot again onto your boy JC, trying to TP out or something. Channeling a stomp is going to be clapped down by Benyaz, double kill for Jisset, and it's going to be a 0 for 4 trade, might be even more, Big Bad Bird, the only one surviving, 
They're going to throw a stifling dagger. He's going to be swapped back in. Benyaz, as well as Nightmare, dropping low, but not before a magic missile can end the Legion's life. It's a 0 for 5. Union Gaming, their raw advantage in gold, pretty much winning them that fight. Yep, that uh, ogre dying early spells a full team wipe. Just said Avil on the backside to pick off the Razor as well as the Warlock. So very well played from him. It almost looked as if they were bait, trying to bait out the duel at the end, kind of dancing around that Legion commander, but she didn't bite and they'll finish her off as well. And things just looking extremely scary for Root in this mid game. Yeah, it really is. Warlock Golem is up, but we also have the Diffusal Blade on Vengeful Spirit, and every time he uses that, it's more or less just going to be that AoE stun, which is okay, but you really want to have that damage from the Golem, and Warlock is pretty much a dead pick for Root at this point. Yep, and incredibly enough, assume the third position on the net worth chart has this Vengeful Spirit, so ahead of that safe lane Razor, who maybe jumped in bottom, but actually the Stifling Dagger going to whiff, hit a creep, so Jesse going to back off for the time being. Does have the Broadsword as well as the Perseverance up, so is about 700 gold away currently from that Battle Fury. Zender as well as Nightmare, going to bump into Joik and company. Magic Missile not going to be thrown out, it's a swap into Big Bad Bird, jump in for Benyaz, he's going to be lifted up, but the Mystic Flare into Big Bad Bird drops so quickly, clap stolen by Rubik, Benyaz is being linked up. There is the ultimate coming out from the Warlock, but instantly diffused up, with the split coming out from Benyaz, going to focus into Ink Dota, going to boulder him up, slow down, Magic Missile, Ink Dota is going to be healed up by the Warlock, and he's going to survive. Currently, it's a Warlock Golem down as well as the Leech Commander, there is going to be an Echo Stomp coming out from the Elder Titan trying to delay this. They throw the Razor up the air with the remainder of that Brewmaster split. Benyaz is going to give a split away of the Rubik yet again. Your boy JC has been able to find a decent position for that. Maybe there's an opening for Root to win the next fight, but as for this one, I'm going to say that's a win for Union Gaming. Definitely so. They bait out the Eye of Storm as well as the Chaotic Offering, which is a huge cooldown at this point in the game, looking at 165 seconds for that Warlock. They overlap the Echo Stomp from the Titan and the Mystic Flare so perfectly there, and were able to bring down the LC before the fight even started basically so nice win for them well played by them to disengage as well and not lose too much for it yeah. or anything I should say that didn't feel like a level 1 Mystic Flare from the Scarth Mage. Also amplified up by the Elder Titan and the Ancient Seal. Level 1 Mystic Flare pretty much dropped the Legion Commander flat. Mm -hmm. I'm going to scout out with the Ancestral Spirit in the top lane. Just Benhaz and Angel here to defend this tier 1. They do have the Primal Split as you mentioned. Here comes a Telekinese and it's going to be brought down right into a duel is Angel. He's going to be cleaned up with a Fire Blast. And that's the first duel win for this Legion Commander. They're going to pursue Benhaz here with the split, but he will blink down to the south and will sound the retreat. Windwalk, though, there is a Cyclone available here. This will give them a couple seconds. They can blink forward, uh, but no duel here to hold him in place. So they'll just zone him out for the time being. In the back lines, though, re-engage upon. Well, people's going to be cast on two. Zindros is caught a little bit out of position. Mystic Flare, he's going to swap back into it and actually kind of saves Ink there, who brings down the Skyrath as well. Fire Blast going to go into Benhaz. He's in a little bit of trouble with the Iowa Storm ticking down on him, but there's going to be TPs in from Jesse. And that's going to sound the retreat here. Blink forward, clap onto Ink Dota. Will he be finished off from the Iron Storm? No, one last right click. Ben has going to survive. And actually, the creep's going to kill him off. That works out even better for Nguyen. Multicast into Jesse. He's going to try and man up versus this Legion commander with the Ancestral Spirit chasing him down. There's a Spectral Dagger. Is the stomp there? It is as well. Blink forward. Jesse going to finish that off. He's going to have the blink stolen by the Rubik here. So can blink forward with the Telekinese. But into the Elder Titan probably doesn't want to do so. And your boy JC going to run right into an earth splitter he's gonna have to go to the north won't get hit by it but jump in from jesse gonna punish him for his insolence and the fire blast will clean up jesse here but angel gonna back joik off and uh that's the end of that engagement looks like a three for two overall in the top lane going the way of union once again was there a fire blast that didn't multicast that last fight i don't I... think so I'm not sure that that spell even exists. Single hit, fire boss, all skill from Joik here. And they got a little bit lucky there, but uh, not sure what your boy JC thought he was going to be able to do with those extra right clicks from that Phantom Radiant Assassin blink. Either way, he pays with his life. And uh, still six charges available on Zinderal's Diffusal Blade, so they have quite a bit of team fight left in them. Yeah, and they'll still have an upgrade as well, and honestly, this game, you're buying it for that usage to get rid of that Warlock <clears throat> ulti, so you might as well uh, just save it, and that's pretty much like 20 minutes of the game where Warlock Ultimate's not going to be useful at all, even if you use it on cooldown. Uh, that early duel under the Elder Titan to start things off almost looked like it might be a turn for Union Gaming because of the amount of damage that um, the, um, <clears throat> Titan was able to hold on to. He was 
sitting with like plus 80 or so. And mm -hmm. if there was no multicast, I think that would have been a fizzled duel. And if there was no extra spells cast in that, I think Elder Titan would have won it. That gets pretty scary for Root. And this Leech Commander, only one stack of damage, has exactly as much bonus damage as Benyaz. <laughs> the Brewmaster has as much damage as the LC. A little bit scary. You're going to see a four-man smoke rotation from Root here. They really need to get something done. They're going to need some more ding, ding, ding on their side to find some kills here. They will scout out with this Dire Observer Ward. Ben has rotating down to the river, but they're actually going to go southwards into the enemy jungle, and they may find the highest priority target on the map right now, which is Jesse. If they wrap around, their smoke is popped. They do know he's here, and they're going to go with your boy GC in the front line. Telekinese up onto Jesse. He's got nothing to blink to. They're even going to overlap the stun. And they're going to duel him up. Plasma Field goes out at mid-range. And they won't even kill him in time for the extra damage. So a little bit of overlap. Perhaps Ink should have backed off for that Plasma Field there. But either way, they do find a very high priority target. And down with no buyback for 50 seconds. I can't really blame the PA for not backing out there. But um, you can tell when there's enemy heroes close because of blurs. So maybe if PA was being a little bit more diligent, could have escaped there. Chaotic Offering going to be dropped in the mid onto Ben has and Zindrals. He'll get Telekinesed up. Fade Bolt, he'll be brought back. Swap is a little too late from Zindrals, and he'll actually expose himself to some danger here as he's backing off. Big Bird going to chase him down. He's being ticked down from Shadow Word as well. Will turn with a glancing blow with the Magic Missile, but should fall and does. And that's already three down across the map for Root Gaming. Looking for more, trying to pursue out Angel. But it looks like they'll just retreat back, clear up the wave, and look for a Tier 1 off this. Yeah, and they should be able to get it, Root. That fight went surprisingly well for them. Their Warlock Alm, again, was instantly dropped, and Union Gaming, a lot of their damage is focused in that PA, so the pickoff beforehand, definitely winning in the subsequent fight. Yeah, and uh, Ben has unable to get off that split there, so real detriment to their fight. They're able to clean him up. He does. He still does have it, though, for this next engagement, so Root thinks better of continuing to push their advantage and getting too overzealous with those couple of pickoffs. Yeah. Just that even after dying once, it's going to be farming up an ancient stack and is at the top of net worth chart and is going to comfortably sit there. Battle Fury as well as Hel Helm of the Dominator picked up and now working towards the Black King bar. Once BKB is up for Phantom Assassin, Root don't really have any great tools to deal with the PA. Their right clicks don't do enough damage mm -hmm. and yeah, she'll just be able to run. Uh, ramp it throughout the team fight. Monkey King Bar might be in the future for Razor and Leech Commander, but even if it is, it's a long ways away. It certainly is. They do have the duel to lock down the PA, but it really won't be enough for them to burst her down. As we saw bot lane, she was completely alone. They pretty much were there with four and couldn't even burst her down in the duration of the duel. So the rest of their lineup probably will be susceptible to being cleaned up during that duel if they do expend it on the PA. Right now, it's Union Gaming's turn to look for a push with the ultimate up on the Brewmaster. 2-2 Tower up top, looks like it's going to be taken Dives without contention of Root Gaming. They're currently huddled in mid as well as down in bottom. Looking up to farm up their own Ancients, they're going to give this Tier one or tier 2 Tower to free. Top tower. You know the drill. Yep, completely uncontested and the Spirit scouting out the heroes Dives of Root mid tower. so they know that they have absolutely a large window to take that down we'll continue to push the wave in a bit but expect that to back off roshan hasn't really been given much love this game we'll see if either team chooses to uh label that as their next objective honestly i think union gaming have the better roshan lineup and it might be the radiant to look for a fight around that pit they also have decent heroes at fighting inside the rosh pit but down in bottom Potentially going to see an engagement on a big bad bird. He's going to be yulesed up immediately. Astral Spirit into the stomp, going to land on Tomb. It's going to be broken by the clap. Blade Mail on big bad bird is not going to save you from the split. And he's going to be brought down very quickly. Snap back by the Elder Titan Ultimate. Cycloned up. The Razor does have the Eye of the Storm activated, which is doing some damage to these Brulings. Ink Dota is going to be bouldered up yet again with the Mystic Flare on top of it, dropping incredibly low. Ancient Seal comes out a little bit late. Doesn't matter. Skyroth Mage notches another kill under his belt with an Arcane Bolt. Yep, meanwhile in mid lane, Jess8 as well as Zinderil's gonna jump onto the Rubik and your boy JC falling as well. Three for nil across the map for Union Gaming and they've even got the wave pushing into the mid. So we'll look to see if they convene as a team and want to join this wave pushing. There are buybacks available on the Razor. The LC will be up really soon. So we'll see if Union Gaming wants to push headlong into these respawns. Yeah, one of the biggest pickups in a long time for Root. We now have an Agnum Scepter on Chicken MC, so maybe they'll be able to have one of those golems inside the mm -hmm. team fight. 
as Union Gaming aren't going to be building into another refusal, but honestly, Warlock, with just one Golem at 75% strength, is very lackluster and doesn't really do very much. Honestly, this Warlock pick, although in theory I really liked it, hasn't been able to do anything. Union Gaming are able to take that Roshan very easily, minus armor coming out from the Venge, and just the constant lifesteal as well as blur from the Phantom Assassin to keep that... Um, <clears throat> tank up. Just it's also going to farm an ancient stack away from Root. Even, root, even though it's a double stack, it's still pretty significant economic damage. Mm -hmm. And the Warlock just did not get enough done mid lane versus that PA. They had to commit the over bot lane to ensure that the LC didn't get fed off of and unfortunately for them, hasn't transitioned very well and the fact that your Vengeful Spirit is pretty much at parity with the raise enemy one position Razor definitely uh, tells the story of the game thus far. Yeah, more or less. To match the Aghanim Scepter on the Warlock, we have one on the Brewmaster as well, and that's scary. 26 minutes in, Vlad's as well as the Aghanim Scepter. He's going to be an incredibly potent hero inside the team fights. Out of nowhere, Ogre Magi actually gets the Aghanims, and that's a pretty big pickoff. If Joik is lucky, uh, maybe there's a chance, but I think they are going to have, a, have to have a couple of those ding-ding-dings in order to bring down some targets on Union Gaming before they get off too much. Yeah, and if an early game is any indication, they should get some good RNG on this Ogre Magic. He seems pretty skillful with what he does, so that is good up against the PA, but the BKB is being ferried over, if I'm not mistaken, fairly soon. So, yeah, and it has been. So, 10-second BKB up on Jesse. should have completely free reign over these team fights. Certainly, both teams posturing around the Dire Secret Shop area, but it doesn't look like any engagement's going to break out yet. Although the Venge might be running into an Ogre, Zender, I'm not sure he knows how much trouble he's in, but he's going to be lifted up, brought back. They have a secondary Fire Blast. They will use the Unrefined, but Zender's pretty damn tanky. Does have the Point Boozer as well as the Ogre Club, and he'll be able to shake that one off. 1,500 health already on this Venge, and they had no chance of bringing him down. Stop is going to hit on the Warlock. Jesse going to jump in. Holding the BKP for a moment. Mystic Flare onto three. Not going to be able to cleave down anyone yet. Earth Splitter coming in from the side, though. It's going to hit on two. Warlock goes down. Ink's going to be hit as well. Swap back on Zinderals. And they're going to find another kill on your boy JC. That's already two clean pickoffs. Jesse, though, going to feed over the Aegis. Stomp connects on two. Going to feed some damage to Big Bad Bird, but they will be able to re engage here. They will drop a concussive shot onto the LC. Joyt's going to be the target of the split, however, and will go down. Instant buyback from the Big Bad Bird. He's going to cancel the TP, however. Doesn't want to TP right into this primal split. And going to use the Wind Panda just to zone out the Razor for now. He'll cyclone him up. Ben has and team will continue to hit up on this tier three. And there are no buybacks on all three heroes that are currently dead for, for uh, Root. And it looks like this is going to be our first lane barracks going away of Union Gaming. Leech Commander kills off Elder Titan with an overwhelming odds, but it doesn't matter. The structure has fallen in the favor of UG, and they can comfortably back off. That early dive by Jessade into the enemy team um, was probably ill-advised, giving a little bit of extra damage to the LC. Um, but in the end, it doesn't matter. Aegis is there to bring you back after you fall, and Jessade's going to be able to clean house. Right now, Root are in a huge deficit in this game, and honestly, I'm not sure there's a great chance that they can come back into it. Yeah, in excess of 20,000 net worth lead. They're trying to make a big risk play for some big reward at this point. Big smoke rotation through the secret shop area, and they may find someone retreating here. Nightmare is on the back lines pretty low, but it doesn't seem like they'll find anyone at this point. They will have Big Bad Bird in the front lines, but he has no blink at this point. Only the blade mail on this LC. So they're going to need the Rubik to catch someone else, and he'll just drop a high ground ward and back off. If it works out for Root, it works out well, but honestly, if they even found somebody, the, all three of them were there, and even though mm -hmm. they don't have a split on the Brewmaster, they had a BKB on PA, and I think that's enough to let them turn. Aghanim Scepter now picked up by this Vengeful Spirit, so we'll have to look to upgrade that Diffusal a little later on, but this gives her a huge range of initiation with the Nether Swap, and that'll pretty much ensure the survivability of this brew, at least until he gets the Brewmaster split off, or allow them to initiate, and they do obviously have a lot of burst, burst potential with this Natural Order, the Mystic Flare, and the Magic Damage from both the Clap and the Magic Missile, so very nice pick up there for the Vengeful Spirit. This should spell uh, pretty much any good engagement or good positioning for Union Gaming hereafter. Yeah, honestly, I think Union Gaming, they don't have to wait for anything, but then again, they're on no rush either. Mm -hmm. BKB on the Razor is a nice pickup for Root, but Battle, or, um, excuse me, Basher on the Phantom Assassin is, I don't know, just infinitely more impactful immediately into the game. Mm -hmm. And it's really scary that for them. Union Gaming, they can passively farm, they can wait for the next Roshan, or they can push high ground now. They're open to pretty much everything. 
Yeah, and they've got a plate mail as well as a chain mail in the stash of Angel. So he's only a recipe away from this AC, about 900 gold from that, a little less now. So that'll be a very big pickup. Perhaps that's their cue. They're just forcing Root into their base, choking them out for now as they continue to uh, reconvene in this mid lane. Yeah, right now Root have hardly any vision. The <clears throat> ward that they place deep after that smoke is all that they have. And honestly, that's not doing anything for them now as Union Gaming are at their front door. Yeah, postured up to look to push this lane in, perhaps just looking for someone to extend to clear the wave and that big range swap from the Venge with that Agonyms could spell the beginning of this initiation. Looks like Joik may be the one to do so, uh, but they will show their faces bot lane and he will retreat for the time being. Yeah, if that was daytime, maybe it's a kill, but now a ward inside the enemy base. The swap is going to be a lot easier to line up for Zinder, and right now there's not a clear opening, but still, all of the lanes are pressured in, and the only income that Root are getting is whatever they can farm under their tier 3s. Mm -hmm. Definitely choking them out of any farm for the map. Razor really doesn't have much at this point. He does have his mech as well as his 10 second BKB now, but he's just not hitting hard enough for them to really worry about him. If they bring down the rest of the lineup, which they haven't been able to do, been able to burst down this LC pretty early most often, then they should be just fine to roll through these team fights. Yeah, honestly, I think the most important hero for Root is the Ogre Jai. If he's able to burst down a target, uh, maybe mm -hmm. they have some hope. And his positioning needs to be absolutely immaculate, and his luck even more so. Yeah, they definitely have to chain well on this Brewmaster if he is their target, but he's extremely tanky with that Vlad's Agonim's Treads up right now. 2100 gold, a little bit of a stock cast from Chaotic offering their taunting UG, but they're going to play this slow and safe, and they'll siege down the range racks in the bot lane with only Nightmare in the front lines. Yeah, they don't have to commit anything for that, but now they jump in. They found Joik, and he's going to be brought down quickly. They do drop the Warlock ultimate, but now Benyaz is able to get off his foot. They haven't defused either of them, but now into the back lines. BKB on the Phantom Assassin. Folks down, taking MC. Will get a crit to finish his life, and Razor is man fighting as best he can. Cyclone onto the Razor. Crit again onto Ink Dota. Another crit. The cleave damage onto your boy JC and Ink Dota is pretty immense. The stick charges. It's going to save both the Rubik and secure the end of Phantom Assassin's life. That dive was probably ill-advised the structures are still standing for root but buyback on the pa she wants to get back into this they'll defuse up one of the golems yep no buyback for the ogre lc or the warlock at this point in the game so ug can just continue to siege here and it seems like that's what they're willing to do yeah uh, there's nothing really stopping them now that was all that root could throw at them and even though they killed the pa and they probably shouldn't have been able to kill the pa um, right. It doesn't matter, because PA can get back into this fight, swap onto the Razor, now Magic Missile jump into a Mystic Flare. It's not enough to rock Ink Dota immediately, but silence up, he has nothing to do except for fall. Oh, your boy JC going to suffer a similar fate as he gets crit down by Jess Ed. Fire Blast into the Phantom Assassin, buyback by the Razor and the Rubik. If they can kill off the Phantom Assassin, could be huge, but she's able to blink away. Still slow as anybody can be. And now swap from Zender. Zender might be giving up his own life for this, but Phantom Assassin looks like she's going to make a clean retreat, and Zender's still surviving. Yule Scepter is going to disjoint that um, <clears throat> Concussive Shot flying through by the Skyrath Mage Plasma Field. Doesn't connect onto anything else. For now, Root desperately looking to find anything on this retreat of Union Gaming, and they find nothing. Yep, the Aghanim Scepter for the Ventral Spirit certainly paying dividends, but in the mid lane, Magic Missile clap, and here comes the Echo Stomp to finish off the Ogre Magic. Swap was stolen by your boy JC, but he uses it pretty poorly and will feed over his own life, and the GG's come out as they crit down the Warlock, and Raids are probably going to be the next to fall despite this PKB as the game one ends with Union Gaming in a very convincing fashion taking out Root. Definitely, it looked really solid through all stages of the game. They at a really great landing stage, they transitioned well later on in the game, and honestly, it didn't feel like Root really had a chance throughout all of that. Even though there, was, there were some moments where they got some reasonable trades, it didn't feel like they ever won any. We'll have to see if they're going to come back in game number two. This is a two-game series, um, so we'll have to see if they're going to tie it up one-to-one. -one. I'm Grandis V, he's been More Rage Please, and we're here on Heflet TV. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Heflet TV, but we'll have more Dota coming up shortly.